Getting there on any fishing and or hunting trip with whoever you happen to be with is always half the fun. And this was certainly the case last May when my daughter Carly, wife Christine and I, traveled to a new Ontario destination for us to hopefully catch the bejeebers out of walleye. After driving to Nakina, Ontario, it was a short flight into the lodge. A huge part of the Ontario experience is the pleasure of soaring over its vast lake-covered wilderness. My, how it makes one's mind wonder about all the fish and wildlife you must be passing down below. Then there it was, beautiful Brace Lake and Brace Lake Outfitters, which will be our home for the coming days. Brace Lake itself is a typical river run through it flowage body of tannic acid, stained water, with a reputation for holding big numbers of walleyes and some true monster pike. Of course, this being a fishing show, for the most part, today's story will focus on the walleye fishing we experienced up there last May. But just to clarify our routine, we'd all spend the mornings out fishing together before the ladies would spend the afternoons in their bear stands. That was our first night. And while they were doing that, I was out exploring new areas of the lake to fish the following day. So let's get right out after some walleye, shall we? As far as walleye movements, I was dealing with fish that had just completed the spawn and were just sort of roaming around looking for the warmest water. This is where early season food production always kicks off and where you can predict concentrations of bait fish. Schools of walleyes had yet to set up on deeper structures at all, so I decided to begin my search in shallow water or on the edge of the first drop-off. We began pitching or vertically jigging one eighth ounce jigs with pink and white grubs, a color combination I've had great success with when fishing stained water walleyes. Mostly I focused on rocky shoreline areas of the lake, ideally with some cabbage weeds nearby or any kind of a structural micro feature that I thought might hold better numbers of fish. Depth wise, I positioned mostly within pitching distance of that one to six foot range. And very quickly, we did start catching walleyes. Yeah, that's what I'm changing. There's nothing in the world like a fly on trip to Ontario. It's just gorgeous up here. And I love catching as many walleyes as I possibly can. My dad is always giving me grief for being so quiet when I fish. But that's only because I'm so focused and concentrated on feeling bites. I guess that's just something he's going to have to deal with because that's just the way I am. Now that's my girl. Sometimes you just can't even get a peep out of her and others she can't even contain her excitement and she just won't shut up. See, that was a good color, I told you. Do you need a net? That's three walleyes. We were all having the time of our lives and catching so many walleyes, and the best news is our nice trip is one. barely underway. So trust me, I'm sure you'll be hearing more from Carly soon enough. More and bigger things are yet to come up in Ontario just as soon as we come back, so stay with us. Continuing now at Brace Lake Outfitters, a fly-out camp out of Nakina, Ontario, 
After narrowing down the locational part of the pattern, the walleye action really began to heat up. Right. Need the net? Probably will. Frosty morning. In case you just tuned in, we're up here at Brace Lake Lodge in Ontario. And uh, we got here yesterday, it was like 75 or 80 degrees and blowing 100 miles an hour. It was just hideous with the storms coming and we knew it was coming. And this morning, the Arctic chill has come down. Oh, you little booger. And she's cold, that typical cold front. If you want to get the worst weather of the month, have a film crew come in and then you find out what it is real quick. But we're gonna catch a bunch of fish beside the weather. You know, I mean, you can't do nothing about the weather, so you might as well not complain about it and just figure out what to do in order to catch fish. On a rocky shoreline connected to a big flat with some current coming into it, I finally found the walleyes really stacked up. Just so you know what we're doing in this area, this is the river system that connects a couple of lakes. And right here it bends and there's a kind of a rock wall and the channel comes up against it. So it's throwing that cur current right up against that rock wall. Um, and it, it's, <laughs> wall is maybe an overstatement, okay? It's a foot to three feet deep up on top of the rocks there. And it's about eight feet deep here. But it's still the, the effect of the current coming up against there a lot of times stacks up food that which stacks up the bait fish which stacks up the walleyes nice fish of course you know my motto Chrissy everyone that bites is a nice fish we did also find some success in shallow cabbage beds but more often, we did far better inside the weed line among the shallow rocks. All right. One thing about walleye fishing way up north here in Ontario <laughs> is that you sometimes forget that bigger things are lurking about nearby than the fish you've been catching. Ah. But then something happens that makes you remember very quickly. fish. Wow! In hindsight, I made a big mistake not packing our pike gear. Got my glove all slimy. In fact, year after year, Brace Lake puts out loads of 40-inch plus gators. Big pike. Whoa. Put her on back reel. I'm trying. <laughs> oh. Your eyes get pretty big around when you come up off the bottom there, missus. How silver. <laughs> Big fish. <laughs> what was Kyle saying last Woo! night? Chrissy. What? What was Kyle saying last night at dinner? They got big fish here. That they get generally uh, 100 or to 200 pike over 40 inches a year. Look at that. Do you have your phone with Carly? Woo! That's a good one for Facebook. I don't have my phone. I, it was out of charge this morning. Next time we come, and there will be a next time, I won't be making the same mistake again. I can promise you that. Okay, now back up to Brace Lake where we've had phenomenal success for walleyes and a monster pike to keep us all on our toes. And my friends, once you've narrowed down a pattern, the wonderful thing is how you can then pretty much duplicate success by seeking out the same type of spots using the same techniques. Good job. And that's when you can just sit back and enjoy the fun of catching fish after fish after fish.
Yeah, I've always, always heard my dad talking about narrowing down the pattern when he fishes. And you better believe, I know I've been very spoiled to have a dad to take me fishing who knows as much as mine does, so all I have to do is have fun catching fish. Now as I get older though, I'm doing my best to learn from him about pattern fishing so I can apply it to my own fishing. Yep, that big lug of mine sure didn't get where he is today without that wild passion for fishing oh, yeah. or by learning how to do it better than most. And when it comes to the fishing yeah, we're having one. here, one thing is for sure, I'm not the one running the boat. <laughs> I better grab you. There's no way oh. I'm gonna miss that sucker for you. <laughs> I can't get up. That could be a 20 oh. pound pike, Carly. Oh, I'm over the top of the gas can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't gonna miss it. <laughs> Dig your phone out so she can get a Facebook oh, picture of you now. Here, <laughs> let me have this handle. Oh. I was not going to go in that freaking lift and get it. I was not going to miss it. Hold her, though, if you can. Not by the gills. Just cradle her. Now, if you ever question whether my wife is hardcore or not, notice on her left hand the, the patch made of rags and duct tape to keep the blood from flowing from the last pike. And here she is down here cradling this one, not worried about the fingers. Big old dude. Good fish, Carly. Carly, you know, you should squeal or something when you catch a fish. She just is back there and just whap, 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 she's catching him. Okay, see, now I should have my camera and watch you two with your double header. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's gotta be a good place to fish if you're sitting with a cold front. Things have changed and we're getting fish after fish after fish. This lake, and, and I've just seen a little bit of it so far as you know, but look at that, it's a triple header. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm saying. It's but this is a classic Ontario fly-in lake. There's river systems coming into it, which gives it a lot of fertility and, and keeps it oxygenated all of the time. It's probably not a lake that's gonna have a lot of big walleyes, but because of the river, they'll have the occasional, probably 10 pound fish here too. But you'll have a ton of walleyes that'll go from a pound and a half to three and a half pounds. And that's what the bulk of it, now you get a good day and you can see, we just had a triple. But you get a good day and you can sit here and do doubles and triples all day long. Right. You know, and, and what do most fishermen like? They like to get a bite. When you come up to a lake like this, you can get more bites than you know what to do with. Earlier I mentioned we traveled to Brace Lake in Ontario for a combination walleye fishing black bear hunt. Well, I have a wonderful announcement to make about hunting in Ontario that many of you have probably not heard about quite yet. After many years, the province is finally taking a new stand on the spring hunting of one of its most plentiful and fun to hunt big game species. And so last spring, Chris and Carly's bear hunts with Brace Lake Outfitters was the first time any Winkleman has had the opportunity to hunt spring bear in Ontario in a long, long time. You see, black bears are finally back on the menu for non-resident hunters in Ontario thanks to a provincial move to reopen the spring hunt province-wide for the first time in 16 years. Cabinet ministers cited concerns about human bear conflicts and bear hunting as a tourism draw as the motivation behind their initiative. Just like we did last spring with Brace Lake Outfitters, because non-residents are required to utilize the services of an outfitter, the move means big dollars for Ontario tourism and guiding industry. We uh, police every one of our bear baits with a tree camera. 
we love for the hunter to know exactly the, you know, the quantity and the quality of the bear at their bait. It also gives us a better time and idea when to have the hunter there, whether it's a morning bear or an afternoon bear. But I always, always put my tree cameras up with the bear safe because when you invest a little bit of money into some, you know, good quality tree cameras, the bears seem to take those first before the bait. They also concluded that the approximated 105,000 black bear population living in Ontario is both healthy and sustainable. So after years of being unable, we were excited to once again go spring bear hunting in Ontario like we had so many years ago. What a wonderful time of year to get out it is and whenever you take the time, there's always so much to see in the beautiful province of Ontario. Cutting to the chase though, we arrived under an early timing when the bear were just barely coming out of hibernation and not quite yet in the mood for coming in to feed. As you've been seeing, we did have a few memorable encounters, but in the end, not a shot was fired with the Remington 783 Nikon scoped rifles that we had loaded for bear. Oh well, I just feel it's awesome that wildlife managers in Ontario have reopened the spring bear season for non-residents. And now that they have, it's time to once again start making plans to get up there and join in on some of the greatest big game opportunity available anywhere. You know what I like about these folks the most? That Terry and Kyle. They're so nice. They're real. Yeah. They're very real, very nice people that have a deep passion for their business and love the opportunity to share what they know they have here. Right. You know? Now, for those of you interested in making plans to fish Brace Lake for yourself, I couldn't recommend Brace Lake Outfitters more highly. Like we did, during one of the tougher periods to catch walleye, mind you, you'll get your string stretched constantly. Trust me when I say it's impossible to keep track of how many you catch. And like I said, I'll be well prepared for those untapped monster pike next time. I mean, the ones that we caught were incidental, so you know I'm already drooling about the possibilities of actually targeting them. So, that's Brace Lake, my friends. Yet another Ontario hotspot I hope many of you will take advantage of. The more times we go, the more new places we find in Ontario that keep us always wanting to come back for more. <laughs> Such a wonderful problem to have, isn't it? I'm Babe Winkleman. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, everybody, hey, good fishing.